imagine being involved on the defendant side specifically of a one to three million dollar lawsuit and your key witness one of your key witnesses denies that they recall the events that you claim that they witnessed that would be a pretty bad thing to happen and that's pretty much what's happening to monica real right now we're going to take a look in this video at stan dolan the person that she brings in as a witness in her interrogatory number four and then we'll take a look at what stan has to say in response to monica using him as a witness and uh it's going to be a good one i'll see you in just a moment little blast from the past here we're taking a look at the plaintiff's motion to compel document specifically once again interrogatory number four where monica brings stan dolan yeah her her champion it's gonna win the case for her it's gonna go really well except when he admits on social media he doesn't know what she's talking about more or less of course i'm paraphrasing that we'll get his words in just a moment but here's number four let's take a look identify the instance in the mid-2000s including the name of the convention when plaintiff grabbed you and redacted you in his hotel room as you alleged in the tweet you posted to at realisms on february 19 2019 answer defendant objects to this interrogatory because it seeks information that is in the possession of plaintiff and equally accessible to plaintiff defendant further objects to this interrogatory because it assumes facts not in evidence <laughs> facts right let's get to the facts then sounds good Subject to, and without waiving, the aforementioned objections, defendant answers as follows. Bullet point number one. Plaintiff grabbed and redacted defendant without defendant co defendant's consent on Sunday, November 4th, 2007, 12 years ago, while plaintiff and defendant were both attending IzumiCon in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. After several other guests had left Oklahoma City, Stan Dolan, one of the convention chairmen, invited plaintiff and defendant to dinner plaintiff requested that defendant accompany plaintiff to plaintiff's hotel room to view plaintiff's fan film called full metal fantasy now for those of you that don't know full metal fantasy really quick full metal fantasy is a little uh, a little passion project that vic and some other full metal alchemist vas put together where they had the vas like cosplaying the characters and doing a cool little thing like that so that's full metal fantasy Oh, that's the wrong wrong screen cap. There we go. Uh, plaintiff requested that defendant accompany plaintiff to plaintiff's hotel room to view plaintiff's fan film called Full Metal Fantasy. Mr. Dolan stated that he would collect us both for dinner from plaintiff's hotel room. So they're, you know, alleging that Monica and Vic went to Vic's hotel room and Dolan was going to collect them when it was time for dinner or something. Okay. <laughs> uh, bullet point number three. Plaintiff played the video as promised while defendant stood to watch the video. But plaintiff soon grabbed defendant by the upper arms and began aggressively redacting defendant. Defendant attempted to resist, but plaintiff physically restrained defendant and pushed defendant backward toward the bed. Plaintiff climbed on top of defendant and held her down as he continued to aggressively redact defendant. So they're saying, you know, Vic did that to Monica. Bullet point number four. And this is a very important one because this is one that Stan will, you'll see in a moment, Pretty much denies. I don't want to put words in his mouth. We'll take a look at his words in a moment. Bullet point number four. Plaintiff continued in this fashion for several minutes, despite defendant's fear and shock, until Mr. Dolan knocked on plaintiff's hotel door. Plaintiff left Dolan. I'm sorry. Plaintiff left defendant. So Vic left Monica on the bed and hurriedly answered the door. Mr. Dolan inquired whether defendant was okay. Clearly noticing distress. Clearly noticing distress. The dude doesn't even remember this event occurring. But again, I don't want to put words in his mouth. This is my take on his statement, which is coming up. It's just so ironic. I need to point it out early. Mr. Dolan inquired whether defendant was okay. Clearly noticing distress. Defendant, however, was too shocked and afraid to admit about what had just occurred. And finally, bullet point number five. Following dinner, plaintiff forced defendant to speak with plaintiff's longtime fiance on the telephone. And plaintiff spoke with his fiance as if nothing had happened. The really important one is bullet point number four. 
and what leads up to it. So also one, two, three. But number four is the really crucial one. And you'll see why right now. So shortly after that uh, document came out, Stan was aware of it. Seemed like he was kind of keeping up with the lawsuit. A few of his other tweets, he also mentioned that he was reading like uh, Funimation's motion for TCPA, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But he made this tweet saying, why was I named in a legal document? Now, just as a quick side note, I normally redact the names and, you know, Twitter handle and all that of people I use in my videos, but Stan's been very vocal about this. He's been very upfront and public about his position and, you know, being named a witness and making these statements. So I don't think he would mind. And I think not even would he not mind me not redacting that. I think he would maybe be, be more inclined to want me to keep it like that since he's in the public light already. And he's, you know, he's responding in real time uh, publicly and all that. So uh, that's why we're doing it this way. And here's what Stan had to say about being brought into the lawsuit via that interrogatory number four from Monica's counsel. This is the affidavit of Stan Dolan. Reads, on this day, Stanley Charles Dolan Jr., personally known to me to be the affiant herein, appeared before me and after being sworn according to law on his oath, Deposed and said as follows. Number one, my name is Stanley Charles Dolan Jr. and I reside in DeKalb County, Georgia. I am over the age of 18 years old and competent to make this affidavit. I have personal knowledge of the facts stated in this affidavit and these facts are true and correct. Number two, I have read Monica Real's response to interrogatory number four contained in Monica Real's amended objections and responses to plaintiff's first interrogatories and requests for production and Cause number, we're not reading that, in the one for, uh, 140, 141st District Court of Tarrant County, Texas. The response. This response is attached to my affidavit as Exhibit A. Number three. I was the owner of Izumi Con in Oklahoma City in November 2007. Number four. Monica Real and Victor Mignana were both guests at that convention. Number five. I have no memory of the events described in bullet point four of the response. And that's why I was telling you guys that's a really important one. We'll dial back to that in just a moment just to be sure that we get the whole story here. Number six, if I had noticed Monica Real being distressed leaving Victor Mignogna's room, I am certain that I would remember it. And number seven, in subsequent years, I invited Monica Real and Victor Mignogna back to my convention several times. I would never have done this if I had been informed of any problems between Monica Real and Victor Mignogna. So he doesn't recall Monica being distressed and I mean, if they're claiming that he witnessed her like on the bed looking distressed and, you know, Vic hurriedly to open the door, you know, uh, I think he would remember that as he says as well. He thinks he'd remember that. But let's get that info one last time. So one more time, bullet point number four, plaintiff continued in this fashion for several minutes despite defendant's fear and shock until Mr. Dolan knocked on plaintiff's hotel door. Plaintiff left defendant on the bed and hurriedly answered the door. Mr. Dolan inquired whether defendant was okay, clearly noticing distress. Again, clearly noticing distress when the gentleman denies that. Defendant, however, was too shocked and afraid to admit about what had occurred. That's a pretty rough one, Monica. Wonder, wonder how that's going to play out now. <laughs> that's probably not going to be a good look in court, I imagine. If I had to make an assumption, I don't know, though. Again, I'm not an attorney. Now, another little side note as we kind of start wrapping this up. Last night, Rakeda mentioned that this revelation is gonna look like a good day for Monica's counsel compared to something else that's coming up. And then Ty took that a little bit further and said uh, more or less that he was working on that next thing that again is gonna make this look like a good day. So I can only imagine what's to come. This seems like a pretty big hit to the defendant's merit. And if this is gonna look like a good day compared to what's to come, then what's to come? I guess we'll find out. Guys, we, we got some merch going on now. Some some good old merch from Teespring. I don't know if you noticed the little listings in some of the videos now, but it's also not up to date with the shirt. So some very simplistic designs if you guys are interested in this. We have the Oxoak Zon mug, which is from the poster I have down there, but it's off camera most of the time. That's a really cool saying, but let's focus on the Vic stuff. So we have an I Stand With Vic mug and an I Stand With Vic shirt. The shirt's a really simplistic design. It's a premium t-shirt. They had an option for a more basic one, but didn't sound like it was comfortable to wear. And personally, there's times I've seen cool shirts, but the shirts weren't comfortable and then I barely wear them. So I went with the premium ones, a bit more pricey, but apparently it's a pretty comfortable shirt. I'm ordering one, I'm gonna try it out. Uh, we have a few different colors. If you're interested in this, we got, uh, we got, we got green, we got blue, gray, uh, yellow kind of, another blue, another blue, another yellow, a gray and a red. I personally really like the white. I think that's pretty clean. And uh, yeah, so that's the shirt. And then we also have the I Stand With Vic mug. Take a look at this one, guys. If you're interested, link in the description. 
Uh, I stand with Vic on one side and ISWV on the other side. Can get it in colors. Now the colors, looks like the handle doesn't come in that trim, which is kind of cool though, because it makes it a little bit more distinctive, I think. We got pink, green, blue, yellow, and white of those. If you guys are interested, Teespring link in the description. And this also supports my channel. You know, I don't get uh, all of the revenue from this. Teespring takes a cut. But I do get some of the revenue, so it helps me out. You get some merch, and yeah, it's a win-win. Also, want to mention, I decided to go with like a more simplistic design because one, I like simplistic styles, and I also wanted to see how the quality would come out before, you know, maybe doing something more complex. But I'm open to suggestions for merch, guys. Any suggestions on all that stuff, feel free to email me at send to hey at gmail.com. S-E-N-D-T-O-H-E-I at gmail.com. Let me know what you guys think, suggestions, all that jazz, and some shout-outs. For the last two videos, because yesterday's I didn't do shout outs, very somber video regarding uh, Kyo Annie. E. But now we'll do the shout outs for the uh, crucial line of questioning video. Shouts out to Random Fandom. And I'm going to read these kind of quick because we have over 20 to go through total. So, Random Fandom, Silver Dusted Flower, Mr. Anime 343, Drac Caprico, Robin Gataman, Blazian Domo, Troas Girl, Ren Usagi, Adele Ali. Um, Crux Raji, Green Tea Ice Cream, Twice Baked Potatoes, Emerald Dragon, Amethyst Sugiyama, Wingless Shinigami, A Shot of Whiskey, Par Paragon Lace and Amped Guard. And then we have uh, Mr. Anime 343, Anime Tony, Ren Usagi, Nameless Person, Random Fandom, Cornbread Man, and Paragon Lace and the Amped Guard. Those are for the last two videos we had. Thank you guys for helping to promote those over on Twitter. And if you post it elsewhere, much appreciated as well. My system only tells me when it's on Twitter. Lastly, if you'd like to join the Discord, link in the description. And if you'd like to become a patron and support this channel more directly as well, you know, merch is a way, patron's another way. Link in the description for all that stuff. Thank you guys, and I'll see you next time.